Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session. I hope each one of you all had a good weekend. So as we start with a new week, uh, and we're going to continue studying on the Gospel of John. So even before we could start with our session, can I request one of us to please lead us in prayer? Can I request uh, Paul Ivoto? Okay, let's pray. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we worship you, we adore you, and I lift your name so high. Thank you for the gift of life of today. As we are going to learn, give us wisdom, give us knowledge, and let whatever we are going to learn multiply and bear fruit. We pray and declare all this in Jesus Christ's name, our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Paul, for leading us in prayer. So we're going to continue studying on the Gospel of John. So, so far, what did we study? Just to recap, but whatever we studied from the last week, and I request few of us to share a few points that we studied from last class. What do you remember that we covered? You can go through your notes. All that we studied is from our notes. You can keep your Bible open. And please share. Did do you remember? Do you recollect what we studied, what we covered in our last class? Did we study about Jesus' ministry? How did John portray Jesus' ministry uh, is to the world? We did cover, right? Jesus is the creator of the world and Jesus is the light of the world. And, you know, uh, John portrays about Jesus. Jesus takes away the sins of the world. So his message, his ministry is for the world. We also covered the purpose. Did we the purpose for writing this book? So where is, the, uh, where is the purpose and which verse scripture was it mentioned? Did any of you all make a note on which scripture is the purpose of this book recorded? Can I request one of us to turn to John chapter 20, verse 30 to 31? Please make a note. The purpose of this book, the Gospel of John, is recorded, is found in John chapter 20, verse 30 to 31. Can I request one of you all to please turn to chapter 20, verse 30 to 31. Zeli, would you like to read? Okay, sure, Pastor. Yes. And... Truly Jesus did not uh, and truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Amen. Amen. So it is very clearly John puts a purpose saying that it uh, um, he prime uh, John's primary intention. Uh, is very evangelical in nature. We see that, you know, and he also makes clear that uh, uh, the deity of Jesus, he clearly says that uh, Jesus is the son of God and believing you may have life in his name. You know, um, uh, he, he clearly he clearly uh, shares the deity of Jesus because there were uh, gno uh, gnosticism was very common those days, and he uh, to challenge uh, uh, to challenge uh, gnosticism. He clearly portrays that Jesus is the Son of God. The deity of, uh, deity of Jesus clearly revealed, and uh, he, he clearly says it. Jesus is the Son of God. 
God. And John's gospel would be a very uh, important denial of this heresy. And so John refers to the signs that he has recorded for so that any common man can believe that, yes, he is the son of God. How he is recorded by portraying, li listing some of the miracles that Jesus did. Yes, the very verse in this book, the last verse in John chapter 21, uh, last verse says, Jesus did many miracles. Not everything has been recorded. That's what verse 25 says that, Sorry, from 24, I'll read. This is the disciple who testifies of these things and wrote these things. And we know that his testimony is true. Verse 25. And there are also many other things that Jesus did, which is they were written one by one, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Amen. So Jesus has done many, many, many miracles, but then not all of them have been recorded or listed. But then John very carefully, yes, chose the miracles that Jesus did so that it won't be a repeat from the synoptic gospels, but very few. But here we see that turning water into wine. He listed the very first miracle. So in this miracle, we see that how John demonstrates, I mean, Jesus demonstrates that, that uh, John demonstrates that Jesus has the authority over the elements. So unlike like this, you know, he listed other miracles like the healing of the nobleman's son, healing of the paralyzed man feeding the 5,000 and walking on water or healing the man who was born blind and also raising Lazarus from death and calling forth a miracle to catch the fish, which we see in John chapter 21. We saw that. So uh, as we studied the purpose, let's move on to the next. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, uh, move on to the things which uh, this book talks about: uh, uh, the Son of God. It reveals the Son of God. The very first verse, chapter one, verse one. So, unlike the other gospels, we don't see a genealogy here. In the uh, Gospel of Matthew, we see the genealogy of Jesus. It was recorded from. Genealogy. Okay. Uh, Matthew recorded the genealogy of Jesus uh, to David and then till Abraham. And in the book of Mark, there's no genealogy recorded because Mark was portraying Jesus as the servant. So genealogy was not required for a servant. No one will ask your background with a servant. Uh, from which family background have you come from? But then uh, Matthew was portraying Jesus as a king. So even when in the Old Testament, when we studied the book of Chronicles or the book of Samuel or the kings, we see every king's genealogy was recorded. Uh, so and so begat so and so, isn't it? So there is a history shown that this person was the son of so and so. In the same way for Jesus, when Matthew was portraying Jesus as the king, he had to record the genealogy of Jesus. But whereas Mark, because he was portraying Jesus as the servant. So your servant's genealogy was not much needed. So Mark had not recorded. But then Luke, what did Luke portray Jesus as? Please unmute and y'all can answer so that we keep our class interactive. Yes, please go ahead. Mom, mom, as man. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yes. Mark portrayed uh, Jesus as man. Sorry, Luke portrayed Jesus as man. So as a human, he had to get the genealogy. So we see Luke gets the genealogy not uh, uh, from David or from Abraham, but then he goes to the very existence of man, that is to Adam, so that we get to know like how Jesus was connected to Adam, the very existence of man. 
and now John. What is John trying to tell us? Is there a genealogy in John? I think John is trying to show us that Jesus is God. There is no need of his genealogy because exactly. it comes from the ageless past. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Yes, John is revealing Jesus as the son of God. So there is no genealogy required there because he is the creator. That's what we see in John chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. Can I request one of us to please read? can you please ma'am can you please repeat the chapter okay john chapter 1 verse 1 to 5 john chapter 1 verses 1 to 5 yes. in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god he was with god in the beginning though him all through him all things were made without him nothing was made that has been made in him was life, that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness was not understood it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So what we see from this passage, we see that Jesus was in the beginning. And Jesus was God. And Jesus was involved in the creation of everything. So Jesus was in the beginning, Jesus was with God, and Jesus was involved in the creation of everything. And we also see that in later passages, when we study the later chapters, we see that Jesus has been continually referring God as his Father. So when God is referred to as Father in the whole Gospel, we see more than 120 times. But then here in the Gospel of John, um, he emphasizes that Jesus uh, refers God as his Father more over uh, 35 times. This is much more than any of the other Gospels. For example, in John chapter 10, verse 30, John chapter 10, verse 30. See, as we discuss on each scripture, I would request you all to please highlight, mark, so that, you know, when we refer through a scripture, we can remember what we studied in the class. So we see that in John chapter 10, verse 30, Jesus referring God to his Father, he says, I and my Father are one. I and my Father are one. We see how uh, John focuses in the later scripture in chapter 8. Can I request you all to please turn to chapter 8 so that we can take turn and read for you scriptures. Okay. When we read chapter 8 verse 54 to 59. 54 to 59. Can I request one of us to turn and read? If I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My Father, whom you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. If I said I did not, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. Uh, till you. 58 or till 56? 59, please. Okay, 59. You, uh, verse 57, you are not yet 50 years old, the Jews said to him, and you have seen Abraham. 50, verse 58, I tell you the truth, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. At this they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. Thank you, thank you. So what we see in some of the scriptures, Jesus addressing himself as I am, which is a very, uh, which is a most powerful, powerful scripture. Saying I am is referring to God. In fact, Jews were very scared even to write the name of God, to write God or to write I am. So here Jesus has been continuously referring himself that I am. 
when uh, can i request some of the iams that we have uh, we can see that john is recorded in this scripture in this gospel of john um, yes there are seven iams that john has recorded we can go through each one so can i request you all to turn to john chapter 6 35 and the other person john chapter 8 verse 12 let me make a note of these scriptures so that we have a record of it let me post it for you all john 635 the other person take john 8 as 12 next person take john 10 verse 7 next person john 10 verse 11 11 and 14 yeah next person john 11 25 the sixth i am is john 14 verse 6 the seventh is john 15 verse 1 so can we quickly take out these scriptures and we can follow one after the other one after the other we can read these so that we know what the scripture talks about okay the first person who was ready with john chapter 6 verse 35 please go ahead john chapter 6 verse 35 then jesus declared i am the bread of life he who comes to me will never go hungry and he who believes in me will never be thirsty amen So here we see Jesus addressing himself as I am the bread of life. So John has recorded about 7 I ams in this gospel and we are going to study each of them. So the first one John chapter 6 verse 35 we see that Jesus addressing that I am the bread of life. The next person John chapter 8 verse 12 please. When Jesus spoke again to the people he said i am the light of the world whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life man what we see here we see a jesus addressing himself as i am the light of the world the first one was i am the bread of life and the second is i am the light of the world and can we move on with the next scripture john 10 verse 7 Therefore Jesus said again I tell you the truth I am the gate for the sheep So what we see here the other version says I am the door I am the door The next one John 10 verse 11 I am the good shepherd the good shepherd gave his life for the sheep Amen you Jesus is saying I am the good shepherd I am the good shepherd can i request the next person to read john chapter 11 verse 25 john john 11 verses 25 jesus said to her i am the resurrection and the life he who believes in me will live even though he dies so here we see jesus saying i am the resurrection and the life I am the resurrection and the life and he who believes in me though he may die but yet he shall live. So you he's saying that I am the resurrection and life. If you believe in me you will live. You will have eternal life. Can we move on to the next verse? John chapter 14 verse 6. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Very clearly, Jesus saying, "There's no other way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Except through me." So Jesus is very clearly saying that, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." Can we move on to the next verse, chapter fifteen, verse one, please?
I am the true wine, and my father is the wine dresser. Amen. Thanks, Nikki. So, what we see here, I am the true wine. Jesus again addressing the seven I am's we see that the first one was, I am the bread of life. Second, can I request one of you all to say? What was the second I am? These are the very important points that we need to remember, recollect. What are the seven I am's that has been recorded in the Gospel of John? We just discussed. Okay, Sid. We'll go ahead with Sid. Uh, I am the bread of life. That was the first. Second one. I am Anyone? the life. Yes. Yes, I am the light of the well. Good. The third one. Uh, Jesus, uh, the door. Gate for the sheep in and I am the door. Yes. Third one. I am the good shepherd. Good. Next. Fourth one. I have given out the scriptures. Let me write and type and send it to you all so that it is very important. Which is the fourth one? Resurrection and life. Oh, yes, that's the fifth one. I, I am the resurrection and the life. Fourth one was good shepherd. Fifth one was the resurrection and life, which is the sixth one. I am the, the three points. I am the way, the truth and life. Very good. And seventh one, the last one. I am the true wine. Exactly. Exactly. I have listed all the seven there for our reference. Okay, with the scriptures, I want you all to remember. Okay, so these are the seven I am's that we have studied from the book of John. And also, uh, the uh, there's uh, we can also see that in um, John chapter 18, there's one more I am. John chapter 18, verse 3 to 8, when the soldiers came to arrest Jesus. And they asked, who is Jesus here? And we see Jesus identifying himself. He comes forward and he says, I am. The minute he said, I am. Okay. Uh, we see. We see in verse 5. Okay. Chapter 18, verse 5. Or verse 4 onwards, I'll say, Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that would come upon him, went forward and said to them, Whom are you seeking? And verse 5 says, They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said to them, I am he. And Judas, who betrayed him, also stood with them. Now, when he said to them, I am he, what happened to the soldiers we see here? They drew back and fell to the ground. So what do we understand from this scripture? What do we understand? What happened there that all the soldiers who came to arrest Jesus, they stepped back and they fell down? What happened? Anyone from the class? What do you think could have happened there? I think there, was, there is power in the name I am. Yes. Yes. Thank you, brother, for sharing that. Yes, there is a power in the name I am. The minute Jesus said I am, there's a reverence to that name and people knew it. The minute they said I am, Jesus had that power in him. The minute he said, I am, the soldier stepped back and they all fell to the ground. That's what the scripture says. And we see in verse 7, then he asked them again, whom are you seeking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And verse 8, Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. Therefore, if you seek me, let these go their way. That means if you're looking out for me, leave my disciples, whoever was around him. He said, let them go their way. And that 
the saying might be fulfilled which he spoke of those who gave me i have lost none then simon peter having a sword we know what happened he put the sword back and he fixed his ears and and then what happened jesus said arrest me he gave himself to arrest them you see there so there is a power in that word i am and we also see the seven fold affirmation of his deity in this book okay can we turn to john chapter 1 verse 34 there are some scriptures which i would request each one of you all to take turns and read john chapter 1 let me type those scriptures so that we can keep it ready john chapter 1 verse 34 The next I have is, seen and I have I testify second. that this is the son of God. Okay, one one second, John. I'll just give out the scriptures, then we can start reading. John chapter one verse forty forty nine. The next scripture we'll see John six sixty nine. Meanwhile, please each one take turn and read John ten thirty six. John eleven twenty seven. John twenty verse twenty eight. John twenty verse thirty one. Okay. <clears throat> there are seven affirmations we see in this book and it is very important. So I would request you all to please make a note as we study on those. Yes, John. Please go ahead. John chapter one verse thirty four. I have seen and I testify that this is the Son of God. Thank you. So what we see here, I see and I testify. I have seen and I testify that this is the Son of God. So who's saying this? John the Baptist is testifying that Jesus is the Son of God. The second verse, can I request one of you all to read? John chapter one, verse forty-nine. John chapter verse forty nine. Then Nathaniel declared, "Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel." Amen. So, what is Nathaniel testifying? You are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Wow. Can we also uh, turn to the next scripture? Six sixty nine. John chapter six sixty nine. John chapter six verse sixty nine. We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. So Peter is testifying that we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. So there's a revelation in his spirit. He's saying that you are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. Can I request the other person to turn to John chapter ten, verse thirty-six? Let everyone take turn. We have uh, Ruby, Jeffina, Aradna, Brother Subhashish. Please take turn. John ten thirty-six. Yes, please. Do you say of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blaspheming? Because I said I am the Son of God. Amen. Jesus Himself saying that I am the Son of God. John chapter eleven verse twenty seven. John chapter eleven verses twenty seven. Yes, Lord, she told him, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. So we see a Martha testifying that Jesus as the Son of God. You are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. And then we see in John twenty twenty eight. What do we see in John chapter twenty verse twenty eight? Thomas said to him, "My Lord and my God." Thomas said to him, "My Lord and my God." What a wonderful! What a realization that Thomas received, and he looked at Jesus and he says, "My Lord and my God." 
And let's turn to chapter 20, verse 31, please. John 20, verses 31. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Amen. Amen. Which is the very purpose of this whole book. We see that John declaring, the author of this gospel, is declaring that Jesus is Christ and he is the Son of God. From the very beginning of the book till the end. He continuously declares it again and again and again that Jesus is Christ and he is the son of God. This is something that we need to know that Jesus, yes, and uh, we see Jesus as human, but at the same time, we need to see Jesus as Christ. He is the son of God. That is the essence, the very purpose of this book. So as we studied on the seven. Uh, 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 witnesses testifying that Jesus as the Son of God. We also see Jesus as human in the same gospel portrayed at, uh, uh, through the miracles, through the signs. Well, the other gospels, the other synoptic gospels addresses the miracles as miracles. Okay, But then in the gospel of John, John addresses these as the signs. Okay, he mentioned it as signs, signs which Jesus did. Well, what are the signs that we see as a human that Jesus did? That is the wedding at Cana. What did Jesus do at the wedding of Cana? He helped out the need that was there. He held out. So as a human, he understood the problem, what was going on there, and he stepped in and he helped out. Some of the human nature, some of the human character we see in Jesus in this book of in the Gospel of John. And we also see near the uh, Sychar well that he, he was very tired. So he rested there and he asked the women, uh, the Samaritan women for some water because he was thirsty. And we also see. Because of the time, I'm not going into the scriptures, but I'm just giving out. We also see uh, at the grave of Lazarus, he was deeply moved. And what happened? The shortest verse. What did Jesus do near the uh, grave of the Lazarus? Jesus wept. Yes, Jesus wept. So as a human, we see that Jesus had emotions. He wept. And in the upper room, we see that Jesus washes the uh, the uh, the feet of the disciples jesus washing the feet of the disciples and wiping them and we also see on the cross what happened what did jesus said on the cross one of the seven words that jesus expressed as a human jesus was thirsty he said i thirst at the cross he said i thirst so human nature you know, before dying, there's a thirsty within him. So more of the inner consciousness of Jesus is also revealed in the Gospels as in when we read. We also see uh, in uh, uh, one of the chapter in chapter 17 that Jesus prayed loud. Even in the voice, you know, he prayed loud, it says. So again, that's one more emotion as a human has been recorded. So some of the distinct features from the book of John we can see is Jesus been uh, constantly been focused. Jesus was focused on the work that the Father assigned to him. You see in John 4, 34, he says, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. And again, in some other scriptures, he says that he who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. And again, in some of the other scriptures in chapter 5, we see that he's confirming, I have come in my father's name. And in John chapter 18, verse 18, John chapter 8, sorry, John chapter 8, verse 18. He says, I am one who bears witness of myself and the father who sent me bears witness of me. We see how Jesus bearing the witness of the father and he is relating to God as his father. 
and also in John chapter 8, verse 38, the first half of verse 38, we see that I speak what I have seen with my father. I speak what I've seen of my father. So I don't do anything out of my own will, but I, I do what my father is asking me to do. So continuously we see that how Jesus was focused on the work that his father sent him for. And at the end of this gospel, ch uh, chapter 20, verse, uh, verse 21, chapter 20, verse 21, we see that again, Jesus saying that peace be to you. This is after the death of Jesus, after his ascension, he's saying, as father has sent me, I also send you. So what is uh, Jesus trying to say here? So now I am with the father. Okay, and he is also assuring that I am sending you a comforter. You will be comforted and he will be with you. He will never leave you. We also see that affirmation in John chapter 14, verse 16. 16, saying that I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Who is this helper? He is the Holy Spirit who will abide with us forever will never leave us. And here with that helper, Jesus is saying, as Father has sent me, I also sent you. Why? To proclaim the gospel to the world. We see the Great Commission again, which Matthew had recorded. We also see here Jesus sending out the disciples. And this message can also be taken personal to each one of us. Jesus sending us to go share the good news, to go share the gospel. So the Gospel of John concludes with a very interesting claim uh, from an eyewitness, that is John himself. In John chapter 21, can we turn to 21 verse 25? Very, very important. And there are also many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Amen. So he's saying Jesus did many miracles in three and a half years of ministry. Jesus did many miracles. But if everything needs to be recorded or if everything needs to be written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the book that it would be written. So very, very important that Jesus assuring all the disciples and us that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit will be with us, He will abide with us, and He will teach us all things, recalling uh, to our mind what Jesus has said, that He will be the witness to Christ, which will be His main function, that He will teach us. He will lead us and He will guide us. We need to have this fellowship. We need to have this relationship with Jesus so that He can teach us. As um, the scripture says, that my sheep hears my voice. His voice becomes very clear. The more and more we seek Him, our spirit gets tuned to His voice. We can still hear that still small voice talking within us, leading us, guiding us, because He is the light. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So with that, we end the Gospel of John. But at the same time, we will just go through all the four Gospels today uh, before we could end. So what? how do we compare all these four Gospels? What do we learn from these four Gospels? Because this is very important for us to know the, uh, the message from each and every gospel. We have only four gospels. What are these four gospels stands for? And what are our learning from these four gospels? That should be the essence of our class of we studying. In last five class, we have been studying on the gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What is our learning? Class, it's open. Yes, please. Brother Lubega, go ahead. I think it is very important for us in our apologetic studies to know what we do actually believe in 
and not uh, to be just taken away by just wind or dogmatically to know the real instance where does it start from and where does it take us i think that's the major, one of the major reasons thank you pastor thank you thank you for sharing that thank you i'm just sharing a presentation that i prepared let me know if everyone can see it It is visible, yes. Okay, thank you. So what is the difference between each gospel? Can we see this? I've tried to put it at all on one. So we see Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew portrays Jesus as the king, Mark as a servant, and Luke as a man, and John as the son of God. We also see the cherubim, uh, the uh, Jesus portraying, uh, they, they portray Jesus as the lion, the king, and Mark as ox the servant, and Luke as man, the son of man, and John as eagle. What are these figures remind us when we studied the whole testament? Do we remember this that we covered, the tabernacle in between all the 12 tribes around and each one carrying the banner, the banner in front of their tribe. And also in the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel writes about the four living creatures and it is the same. It is from the very beginning we see that, you know, God relating to these four features. And in the tabernacle, we see that in the north was eagle. And then we see the son of man here in the south. And east is lion and west is the ox. And accordingly, the tribes were arranged like this. We see here the lion was the tribe of Judah and then we have Ephraim in the west, Ephraim in the west, and then Dan and Reuben in the north and south. We see it here. And this is how uh, Ezekiel portrays. And also uh, in the book of Revelation, we see below the throne of God, there are four cherubims with the features of uh, the man, the lion, uh, the eagle and the ox that's the tabernacle okay we will come to it so we also see uh, okay so what do we see in the tabernacle we studied about the outer court and then the inner court and the holy of holies there are three parts the outer court the inner court and the holy of holies so there was a veil that covered. There was a veil that was between the Holy of Holies and the inner court. Can we see this? This is inside the inner court. So what do we see inside the inner court? On the left hand side, we see a menorah, a seven lampstand. And then on our right, we see the table of showbread. There's a 12 showbread according to the tribe. And in the middle, we see the altar of the altar of incense. And then we see the veil. Can we see, can we all see the veil? Class, can we see the veil? Yes, Pastor. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so we see the veil that is separating the inner court and the most holy of holies. So the veil, can we turn to uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 18 to 20? Hebrews chapter 10. We are running out of time, so I request you all to please turn to chapter 10, verse 18 to 20. Can one of you all please read? And where these have been for, 
have forgiven, have forgiven. There is no longer there a sacrifice, no longer for, sacrifice sin. for sin. Therefore, brothers, since we have a confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, go into your class quickly. And, go in class by a new and living way, opened for us through the curtain that is His body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Amen. Bill <clears throat> 20, you read. Uh, 21 also, uh, 22 also I read. 22 you read. Okay, okay, thanks. Okay, so what we read here is in verse 20, by a new and a living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. So what we see here, we see in the scripture through the book of Hebrews, we see that in verse 20, he's comparing the Hebrew, the author of Hebrews saying through the veil that is his flesh. So here we see the veil represents the flesh of Jesus. So what does this veil that separates the Holy of Holies and the inner court stands on? It stands on the four pillars. What is that? Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Can you see the representation of each book in the figurative here? Can we see that? The four figures? Yes. Can we see Matthew as the figure of lion, Mark as ox, Luke as man, and John as eagle? Can we see that? So these four Gospels talks about his flesh, his life in the flesh. So the flesh is the only thing that separates the holy God from the sinful man. So what happened on the cross? What happened on the cross? When Jesus died on the cross, what happened? What happened to this veil? It tore into pieces. The veil was torn. The veil was torn. Thank you. Yes. Was it torn from the bottom to top, or how is it? From, from top, top to bottom. bottom. Yes. The veil was torn from top to bottom. And this veil was very thick. It was not very thin. The veil is very, the veil is very thick that no man can tear it. No man, it was only God. So on the cross, the flesh of Jesus was torn. And here in the tabernacle, the veil that separated the man and God was torn from top to bottom by God himself. And we also see the colors, the representation of the colors on this. Let me go to that so that we know. Okay. Matthew represents the king, the purple color. And Mark, the servant, that is the scarlet, which is a red. And Luke, fine linen, which is white man. And John, the blue color. So all these four colors are on these curtain. Can you see it? Blue, purple, white, and the red. And also when we uh, read the... Uh, yeah, that is it. I had to share from this. Okay. Let it be here. So when we read the genealogy, so what happened? Are there genealogies in the uh, in the book Gospel of Matthew? We're having a quiz time. Please tell me the genealogy yes. of Matthew. Till where it went to? Till where they addressed the Matthew, the author of the Gospel of Matthew, addressed the genealogy of Jesus. Till whom? Is it from King David? King David and then till Abraham. 
Mark, did we have genealogy in Mark? No. No. Good. Because uh, as, a, as he was representing Jesus as a servant, so gene, genealogy was not required. And how about in the book of Luke, till where the genealogy was represented and why? Anyone from the class, please? I think it starts from Adam. Yes, because it, he was representing Jesus as a man. So the very beginning of human. So he went up till Adam. And in the book of John, there's no genealogy because John was representing Jesus as God. He existed in the creation. That's the reason he starts the book at uh, saying in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He directly went up to the beginning and he says that he was in the beginning with God and all things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made and in him was life and the life was the light of them. He also said in verse 14 he says that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The same word that which was in the beginning, it existed at the beginning, it was there. And now that same word became flesh and he dwelt among us and he relates to Jesus. This son of God whom you see now was the same person who was in the beginning. As he is relating Jesus as a son of God. And we also see um, uh, as Matthew was uh, writing the genealogy, can we turn to Matthew chapter 1? Can we all turn to Matthew chapter 1? How many women have been listed in the genealogy here? How many women have been listed in the genealogy here? Anyone in the class? I know we are running out of time, so quickly. We are almost ending. I think two. Okay. Anyone else? The number is not, I'm not sure with the number, but I think he, if John says twice, I think I can add on a third one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Okay, there are two genealogies, one from uh, Joseph and one from Mary's side. But then the women that uh, Matthew mentions are four women. Okay, one is Tamar. Can we see Tamar in verse 3? Tamar was a woman chosen by God, but her life was messed. She was also involved in adulteress, but then God chose her. Matthew chose to write a name because she was chosen by God. We also see Rahab's name in verse 5. Can we see Rahab's name in verse 5? We all know the story of Joshua, the 10 spies or the 12 spies, what happened. So do we know the background of Rahab? Was it good? She was a, she was a prostitute. Yes, but why was a name being written here? Because she carried a blessing. God chose her. That's why a name has also been written. We also see Ruth's name. We also see Ruth's name being recorded. So do we know who is Ruth when we studied the Old Testament? Who was Ruth? Yes. She she was with a lady they call Naomi, and she married, I think, Boaz. Yes, right. So, uh, on uh, was, what was the background? She was from which she tribe? Was, she was a Moabite. She was a Moabite. She was not from the tribe of Jewish tribe. She was not from this tribe, but she was from a Moabite tribe, which was hated by others. But then God chose Ruth despite a background and God chose her to bring 
David from a generation through Boaz and Ruth. And Boaz was the kinsman redeemer. And we also see Bathsheba. Do we know the story of Bathsheba? Who's Bathsheba? A woman married to, to Uriah who was taken over by David and is a mother of Solomon. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So was all these four women from a very good background? On the contrary, no. Yes. So here is the life story of yours and mine. Though we may have a different background that sometimes we would don't like to look back or talk about. We wish a background could be erased. But then God is saying, do not worry. We don't have to hide anything of that or let that not hold us back from what God has a future for us. Purposefully, God has mentioned, you know, all these four women name in the gospel of Matthew, in the genealogy saying we don't have to hide because we have been born new. All the old things have gone and we are new in him. So God chose you and me for a purpose despite of a sinful nature every man and women who are born on this earth are not perfect being except for jesus but then jesus has redeemed us he has paid a price for us on the cross this is what all the four gospel talks about even the 12 disciples whom Jesus chose were not the perfect being. Even when Jesus was with them, they went astray. They betrayed Jesus. They were sinful. It's not that if we are chosen and we are called for the ministry, we may be the pastor's ministry leader so that we are perfect. No, there will be a time when we fall. There will be a time when we are mocked, we are ridiculed. There will be a time when we have sinned miserably do at times but then do not give up because god never gives up on us god never gives up we need to carry ourselves back look up to the cross believe on the redemption work that jesus died on the cross stay strong the path that we are walking or we are journeying may not be easy and jesus never promised that our path will be easy but then he says but i will never leave you nor forsake you i am i will hold your right hand and walk with you and you are with me and you are seated with me at the right hand of the father through jesus so we need to believe in what jesus said and he did and this is the finished work of the cross that we believe our redemption is in. And we need to believe and we need to carry on. Let nothing stop us from serving God. Let nothing stop us from turning back from the call that Jesus has called us. This is the message that we get from all the four Gospels of what Jesus, what he said, what he did, and who he was and who he is, so that we can look at him and hold on to him because our strength comes from him okay so with that we end this session on all the four gospels okay and i i leave matthew mark luke and john with the screenshot you'll get take and you know keep it handy so that we know what these four gospel stands for and also i would like to <coughs> address one last thing what oral roberts said uh, you know once as he was praying he was seeking god and he sends god tell him that if he wants more revelation of god god asked him to read the gospels again and again so i leave that with you and i also learned that uh, personally learned that from me for me as well that you know if we want a greater revelation of who god is who jesus is that we need to read the four gospels again and again and again so that we get the revelation of who jesus is and who he, who he is personally to you and personally to and me Okay, so can I request one of us to end this class with a word of prayer and dismiss us? Gracious Lord, we... sorry, go ahead, Lubega.
Come on, John. It was your gospel. Let's continue. <laughs> All right. Nice. Father, we want to thank you for this time. We praise you, Lord, that for the revelations that you have poured out. We pray, O oh God, that we would um, continue to learn more about you through the Gospels. Thank you for revealing so much to us through your scriptures, O oh God. We thank you for Pastor Diana to explain uh, these mysteries to us, Lord Jesus. We bless each one of us has uh, a class and we pray, O oh God, that we would walk in the authority that you have provided us, Lord Jesus. We thank you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank you so much for joining in today's session. See you all tomorrow with the next book on the book of Acts. God bless. See you all. Thank you.